Good morning, everyone. I'm Peter Mothy. I'm Vice President of Corporate Development here at Flexible Plan Investments, and I've got six charts for you today. I'm going to go through them in pretty uh, quick fashion, so bear with me. The first chart I'm going to show you is the S&P 500. And one of the things I want to share with you is the fact that the market not only had a very sharp, very short live uh, decline going from the February high to the March low, we're also having a very sharp rebound which is now coming up to where we would expect from a technical analysis standpoint to see some overhead supply. This could set up what we often see as a retest in, in markets like this, which I'm gonna go and show you another chart, which is showing you what a retest looks like historically. And here, this is a 20 year chart also of the S&P 500. Taking to the left of the screen, this is the 0203 bear market, and we had a low in late 2002 and a retest of that low in early 2003. Again, in the bear market of 08 and 09, we saw a low develop in the late, late, later part of 2008 with a retest in March of 2009. These types of retests are very common. We saw it again in 2010 again in 2011, again in 2015, 16. These types of retests are seen often. So we should not be surprised to see a retest of the March low of this year, which could come six to six weeks to 12 weeks out into the future. I don't have in this particular software the ability to go back to 1987, but in 1987 where we saw another 30 plus percent decline off of the August highs in 2007, or in 1987, we saw the decline on October the 19th, which we all refer to as the crash of 1987, but the actual closing low was on the retest on December the 4th of 1987. Now let's go take a look at a couple other things I wanted to point out to you today. Just because we're talking about stocks, not all stocks behave the same way at the same time. Not all industries do either. That's why we pay attention to things like correlation, volatility, and momentum. Here is a picture, three-year picture of the bond market. Now, you might be surprised to see that in red are treasury bonds, in green is the aggregate bond index, and in purple is the high yield bond index. Look at the difference over three years between treasury bonds that have a total return of 47%, aggregate bonds that have a total return of a little over 15%, and high yield bonds, which act a lot like equities often, um, up only 3%. This is another reason why when we craft the bond portfolios like we do, we pay very close attention to these different sectors of the bond market. Even though they're all bonds, they behave very differently at different times in the market. Now, let's take a look at, at alternatives. And I wanted to share this with you today because this is also a prominent effect in alternatives. Not all alternatives act the same way at the same time. Take a look at two different commodities. We've got the West Texas um, Intermediate Crude on the top, and we've got gold on the bottom. And you can see that, well, Crude is back at the same level approximately that it was at in 2016. Gold is moving out to multi-year highs here. Once again, when we talk about alternatives, all alternatives are not equal. Just like all stocks are not equal, just like all bonds are not equal, we at Flexible Plan pay attention to these things when we build our strategies and we build portfolios so that we can take into consideration their difference in momentum, difference in volatility, and their differences in correlation. So that's it for our charts for today. Thanks for joining.